Hey everybody, Nick Gizmondi here with you for another edition of World Team Tennis today from the Greenbrier, day 13 in the books. It just finished up behind me at Center Court Creekside. Now, our first match of the day was between New York and Las Vegas. New York pushing desperately to get into the playoffs and they got a stellar performance from King Clijsters in our Geico Highlights. Let's check out some of the highlights here. I said it started out in men's single. Sam Query and Jack Sock, two big hitters in this one, Coco. Definitely. Sam came out playing really well, but Jack just absolutely digging and grinding for that service game. It was definitely directed around first serve, first ball, but Jack was just able to get his teeth into this match and get the one break. Yeah, here's that three-all deciding point. The forehand goes in the net. He launches a ball, and then Jack Sock will serve it out and get the 5-3 win. So they're up by two, and now we head into women's doubles. Some more frustration for Sam. And in women's doubles, these are two Two parts of this squad, they struggle a little bit, but this is when Kim Kleister starts to shine. This is a great example of two singles players against people that actually understand doubles. The girls on the rollers, they were trying their best to hold their ground from the baseline, but when you've got players that are moving and taking the middle like Kavetta and Kim, it's hard to still stay positive and pick the right shot. Yeah, they fought well, they kept it close. But here they are down 2 4, 15 40. And Kim Kleister is just showing off all the shots. She's got the dip. The lob goes up. She lets it go. They win 5 2. But Kleister's was not done. Now we go to the mixed doubles, and she pairs with Jack Sock going against Mike Bryant and Monica Puig. It was a substitution by Isla. She came in and she tried her best. She was throwing everything she could at Jack, but Jack just with the hands, he was so good, so solid. Isla was just a little bit too weak at the net when they actually came in and picked on her. They're up 4-3. It goes to a nine-point tiebreaker. Another example of that heavy spin from Sock. It fools Tom Janovic, and here's the set point. That's the first set point, and now we go to a deciding point for the set. Kleister serving out wide. She was lucky to flip this ball over the Bryan's head and just rip this forehand down the line. Yeah, that was definitely one of the best points of the match. So cool to see the Hall of Famer get pumped up like that. Great camaraderie here with the Empire, showing off some dance moves. Now we go to women's singles, and it's first going to be Monica Puig taking on Sabine Lasicki. Puig looked good to start. Puig looked really good, but Sabine was helping her loads. She was not making enough balls, not giving Monica an opportunity to miss. She, Sabine just needed to be a lot more solid. So a substitution was Kim Kleister. She came in, held her ground, and made Monica think. And when it got tight and got close, you don't want to be going up against a confident Kim Kleister. She's a Hall of Famer for a reason. She was down 4-1 in that set. And there's a look at another forehand winner from Kleister. So she, now she's won three sets in a row. We go to men's doubles. We said we got three, possibly the best doubles players on the court right here. And New York Empire, their men's doubles, the best in the league so far, and it showed here. It definitely showed, showed here with the net reaction. The Bryans get the upper hand here on this net play, but they were so good at taking away the Bryans down the line and movement on their return to serve games and just held serve and just finished up the match and cleaned up. Great look at Sock right there at the net. Here they are on the nine point tiebreaker. Bye bye. Overhead is good. They win 5 4. They win the final three sets 5 4. They take it 25 17. Here are updated standings. Vegas Rollers drop to four and a seven. They only have three matches left. Top four make the playoffs. It's bunched up the middle and there are your aviators in the eighth spot. Not done yet. Never done in World Team Tennis. That's the theme of, of how it all goes here. Well, match number two of the day was the Orange County Breakers taking on the Philly Freedoms. And this one was basically Taylor Townsend versus the Orange County Breakers as the Freedoms continue to just be hot, hot, hot. Here's a look at how that match went in our Geico highlights. The Freedoms and the Breakers, men's singles kicked it off. Stevie Johnson and Taylor Fritz. Taylor Fritz had only lost one set coming in thanks to his big serving. But Johnson was playing well, too. I mean, look at this. That was a deciding point. He had the break. Taylor Fritz started this match serving extremely well, but gave you a few chances to, to Stevie 
later in the set. Stevie took advantage of that. Able to come up with a win in that first set for Orange County. Prince wasn't losing points when he got his first serve in, but didn't get enough in. Then it was Sonia Kennan taking on Jennifer Brady. Brady serving for the breakers here. Kennan up 4-2. And this was the shot of the day. Over the shoulder, top spin, passing shot winner. You don't see this one every day, folks. Do try this at home. <laughs> Brady was smiling as she good ran luck for with it. that one. Yeah, smiling <laughs> and then smiling after she hit it. And that gave her the momentum. Suddenly she was really playing wonderful tennis. Kennan dropped off just a bit. And Brady able to take full advantage in the tie break. She won at five love. So she took the set five four. So the breakers positioning themselves for the upset. Men's doubles for Bree Smart and Donald Young, Austin Krychek and Stevie Johnson. Krychek doing some good work there up at the net, the left-hander. Pretty close doubles match. This one going to a tiebreaker. And there was the winning shot from Martin. He'd missed a couple of forehands earlier, but not that one to clinch it. 5-4. Women's doubles. Gabriella Dabrowski, Andrea Klepatch, Carolina Dolhide, and Taylor Townsend. This was very competitive. Such good communication between Townsend and Dolahide. Very good combination there. Orange County not making it easy. Yeah, they substituted in Jen Brady. They got a couple of games back just to make the score even closer. But Townsend would eventually close it out on serve. Look at that get by Townsend. And there's the winning volley. So an exciting set of tennis. They hang on and take it 5-3. Came down to the mixed doubles. The final event, Townsend and Martin, Dabrowski and Stevie Johnson. This match couldn't have gotten any closer, really. All tied up going into it and all tied up at the end. Dabrowski with that great pass. Yeah, that helped force the nine-point tiebreaker at the very end. The strong return, the volley in the net, and the freedom survive. A stout challenge from the breakers. 22-21, they take it. Confirmation of the results. The breakers winning the singles, the freedoms taking all three doubles and the win. Well, the final match of the day came down between the Chicago Smash, who are in second place right now in the overall standings, taking on the Washington Castles. And really, the Smash got out to a huge start. Brandon Nakashima was absolutely brilliant in men's doubles and in men's singles, and then an incredible match between Sloane Stevens and Venus Williams. Let's take a look at the highlights presented by GEICO. Second place Chicago and a Washington team hungry to get into the top four here in World Team Tennis. Starting in men's doubles, Rajiv Ram, Brandon Nakashima gets Nick Monroe and Marcelo Arevalo, and Nakashima was a theme. He was on fire from the get-go. Brandon Nakashima had it working early. Ground strokes were too much Nakashima. for these guys to handle from the castles. A blistering a beginning, sealing it with the ace. Five love to start for the smash, and then Nakashima already warmed up playing men's singles, and he kept on cooking against Tommy Paul, who was taking some timeouts right away. It was about 10 minutes into the set before Brandon Nakashima missed his first ball. Paul and the Castles try to recover. Tommy did get on the board to pick up a game, but Nakashima just kept on coming and finished it off. 5-1, so Nakashima plays two sets. He's part of 10 game victories and only one loss, and Chicago on its way. Mixed doubles, Bernard Pera, Marcelo Arevalo against Bethany Maddox-Sands and Rajiv Ram. This turned out to be a compelling set. Arevalo tried to get things amped up, but again, things not falling Washington's way. Yeah, really impressive stuff from Ram and Maddox-Sands doing the little things. First serves in the box, a lot of returns in play, putting the pressure on the castles. They went at 5-4, so Chicago with a big lead, but women's singles, the big showdown of the night, Venus Williams, Sloane Stevens, and this one was as good as advertised. Venus Williams was outstanding tonight, controlling the baseline, moving Stevens into the corners, and Venus Williams even coming into the net. Showing off the coverage at the net, and the quick hands for the volley winner. 
Venus engaged here. Down a break, though, to Sloan Stevens and working hard to get back in it. In That's the tie it. break, able to get things done and take it 5-4. So she was subbed in right at the last second for women's doubles with Arena Rodianova against Bethany Maddox-Sands and Jeannie Bouchard, the best doubles team statistics-wise in the league coming in. But Washington had all the answers. All Venus Williams to start this match covering the net, and Arena Rodianova contributing with some great returns. Washington getting it done, getting into extended play, but finally running out of steam as Maddox Sands has the put away and Chicago ends the night. 21-15 the final. Chicago moving to seven and two on the season. Washington falling to four and five, but the castle still in the heart of the playoff chase. What a day from young Brandon Nakashima. And then on the opposite end, the veteran Venus Williams playing some great tennis tonight as well. Some stars showcased here, but Chicago gets the overall win against Washington. Well, certainly TikTok has become all the rage, especially while people were quarantined and looking for things to do. I'm not on TikTok yet, though my nephew Jackson is desperately trying to get me on, but I don't see that happening. However, the Springfield Lasers have found their way to that platform, and they created a little intro dance of their own. Have a look. COVID-19 has turned the sports world upside down. And although we have started to get sports back, it's not the same as when we left it in March. Many leagues, like World Team Tennis, are operating in a bubble without linesmen or ball kids. But the biggest loss to sports might be the high five. Those traditional celebrations have been left on the shelf right next to the handshake and the hug. One more time. So what does a team do to celebrate in the COVID world? I caught up with John Julian Roger of the Springfield Lasers to see how the high five has turned into the low five. One more time. All right, Jules, tell me, how did you guys come out with your unique walkout high five foot taps? Yeah, we, uh, we were thinking about doing something, us, like the Springfield Lasers, the whole team normally were quite um, unified, I would say, like we have very good team spirit and we always try to do stuff uh, to excite the team a little bit. Then I threw out there maybe this, uh, I don't know what you call it, like this foot touch or this foot tap or whatever. And uh, it's inspired by TikTok, of course, but uh, we don't know what we're doing. We're just doing little foot taps and so we don't touch each other and we still do our social distancing. And everybody on our team has seen the TikToks of it and we're not that sophisticated. We're just at the very basic beginner. We're, we're going with the tap, tap, like two taps, right foot first, left set, you know? And that's where we're at with it right now. All right, Jules, I have never done a TikTok dance before, especially not a foot one. So let's try and break it down and take me through it. What do I got to do? Yeah, well, it's really easy. I'm not an expert either. I'm like <laughs> this 38-year-old TikToker here. I don't know what I'm doing. But it's it's right foot first, left second. That's what we do with the whole team. Right. And then as Katie runs out for the last one, we try to do a more elaborate one, which is this one, this one, then that way, and then that way. That's all we ah. do. So it can get tricky out there because Let's you run out and then there's yeah. a crowd and the music's playing and then you don't want to mess it up. So it gets a bit nerve wracking. You feel the heart pumping a little bit. I, you feel, get a it, little... I feel it pumping. It's like a warm up. And you got to hop to it. So we got to do it all quite right, fast. Right. So we're going. I'm terrible myself. Oh, but that's that's about it. Okay, that's so it. it's right, left, yes. left, and then around. And then around. Let's okay, go again. Sorry. This one, this one. I don't know if I'm hopping. There. The hopping part is a challenge. The hopping part is a challenge. Let's go one more time. Okay. <laughs> well, that's it for another episode of World Team Tennis today. We're going to take the weekend off. You enjoy yourself, but make sure that you follow us on social media so you stay up to date and up to the minute informed on everything happening here from the Greenbrier in Season 45 of World Team Tennis. So long for me, but as I say goodbye, as always, here's a look at the schedule for today.